when she arrives, remind me that it's Lenny. Because I sometimes forget. We'll probably just have to use David now to start with. Cool. So we're live. Um, oh, good. okay, good. <laughs> we got the little, that's a new thing. We'll figure that out eventually. So uh, we're live on YouTube. Uh, so if you guys don't know, we stream every uh, Thursday at noon and then 3 o'clock on Facebook. So if you guys want to check it out, uh, we prefer you come in because then you can get all the pre-show stuff that you guys got that they didn't get online, right? Um, but uh, sure, come to visit our friends here from Venezuela. See, I'm giving you a shout out. See that? Um, so yes. Yeah. Anyways, we stream at noon on YouTube if you guys want. Or if you came to the class and I talked way too fast so you have no idea what I'm saying, you can watch it again when you get home. All right, so today we're talking about lighting, really, which is what we talk about a lot. But we're talking about hard versus soft because I find that uh, this is one of those phrases that people use a lot. So I want to kind of break it down and talk, talk a bit about it because see what parts people understand, what they don't understand. Uh, we'll run through. It'll be a little bit loose as usual. Um, we're going to start... Um, with Dave uh, as our model, uh, since our model is trapped on the subway right now, so when she eventually gets here, uh, she'll jump in. Uh, but for now, Dave is the original onset model. In onset number one through <laughs> 50, <laughs> Dave was the model. So um, yeah, so we're gonna go hard, uh, hard versus soft. So let me just talk a little bit first, uh, so you can get some ideas of. of, of uh... Oh, is that Lenny? Yeah. Uh -huh, she's not that late. We just started. Get, just make yourself comfortable. This is Lenny. She's our model. All right. So Dave is now relieved of that duty. See how quickly that, that's how fickle the entertainment industry is. One second, you're there. The next second, you're replaced. Right. So when you're talking about hard and soft, when you're talking, referring to light, you're talking about your shadows, right? Think about shadows always when we're talking hard, soft. It has to do with the transition between your shadow to your neutral. Right, your neutral being like skin tone. Let's say if you're making a portrait. So, if the the transition between your skin tone to your blacks or your shadow is really abrupt and with a straight line, let's say, then that's hard. Right, it's a hard, sudden transition. If it's more gentle, right, it's it's kind of like it gets a little bit darker, a little bit darker, a little bit darker. Eventually goes to to, to black, or maybe not even, or just goes very very dark. That's generally the sign of a soft light. So why do we care? Maybe we don't, I don't know, right? So the main reason is that hard light will bring out detail, right? So if you're shooting something that is highly detailed and you want that texture, let's say, in like a, a I don't know, let's say that you're shooting a bologna sandwich, right? You want that texture in the bread. That you, hard light is, is better for because it's going to give you texture. But let's say you're shooting somebody who's maybe not got perfect skin. Maybe they're getting a little bit older, they have some wrinkles, maybe they've got some, some blemishes. A hard light will actually make little tiny shadows every place that blemish is on the face, and it will make that stuff more evident, right? No matter what a makeup artist can do, they could cover up, like a, let's say, the blemish is a little bit red, but if it's, if it's a physical bump on the face and the hard light hits it, it will make a shadow. That shadow will then you know, take away from the shot in some way, assuming you don't want that uh, in your shot. Now, that's when you might want to go with a softer light source. Softer light source is going to have a more gentle shadow, possibly one that you don't even notice, which could clean up any of that. Right? Make sense? Good. We use shadows a lot uh, in, as photographers, right? Uh, to hide things or to, or to, to show things even, like to, to focus your attention somewhere else. If I want to make somebody's face, let's say, seem more narrow, I might throw more shadows on the side of the face so that it's lit more in the middle, right? With a sudden drop off using, let's say, a hard light source. That's why a lot of beauty photography is done with a beauty dish, which is, by its nature, a relatively hard light. How do I know that? Because it's relatively small. Light sources relative to your subject are hard. Large light sources are soft. That's just the way that is. And remember, relative to your subject, that's really key here. Meaning that if I have a five foot octagon like I have here and I put it really close to my subject, which is what I'm going to do, it's going to be a soft light, right? I can tell that just by knowing that. If I were to put the light way out in the store, 50 feet away, and it was, let's say it was strong enough to be able to light her from that far away, it would be so small relevant to, relative to her that it would be a hard light. So you could do it. And often if you have to back your lights, that's when you really start needing the, the, the larger lights. A lot of times you'll see somebody lighting a whole set and they'll use really large lights, like six foot uh, uh, silks as the light source to light a whole room because if the person's standing 15 feet away, you need a big source to, to get the light to them and not be this like pinpoint hard light, right? Assuming that's what you're going for. 
Now, does that all make sense? Good. All right. All right, I haven't confused anybody yet. That's always a good sign. So as usual, I will start to say what I'm using as far as equipment, then I will forget. So if, you, if, you, if I don't say something, please ask, um, and I will say what it is. I'm shooting with a Canon camera. I will say it right. It is a EOS 1 uh, DX Mark II. Uh, you say it wrong in one video, one time, and you get, uh, so it's a Canon camera. Uh, whatever camera you're using, doesn't really matter for this. All cameras will record light, so you could be using even your phone for this. Uh, this is a 24 to 70. We're gonna kind of shoot portraits. A 24 70 is not ideal as a portrait lens on a full frame camera. It's a little bit wide for classic portraiture, but we're just demoing here, so, because I get that question a lot. I probably would use an 85 or longer if I was actually shooting a portrait. Um, and we're using Profoto lights. Um, they are flash that we're able to trigger using this remote that's on top of the camera. I am tethered, meaning that this USB cable here is not just there for looks. It is actually connected to my camera. You guys can see the photos as we produce them. Um, both good and bad, so that should be fun. Um, I'm also using a Lenny. Welcome, Lenny. Hi. Lenny is an infamous New York City model. Um, so she's gonna be our model. You can just stand there. Um, what we're gonna do is, if we wanna start off, like I always do, setting up our exposure so that none of the light in our space is gonna affect our shot. Because we wanna show what the light does. I wanna be in control of my light in this situation, because I'm teaching, right? So I wanna show you what the light's doing, right? So I need you to be in control of it. <laughs> Um, you might want to be in control of your light because you don't want the light in the space to affect your shot. There are times that you might want the light in the space to affect your shot. Let's say a beautiful window or something. That's another class. Come back next week. All right, so we're going to get rid of the light. The way we do that is we're going to set our camera to its lowest ISO within the normal range, which is 100 in this case. We are going to set our shutter speed at the fastest shutter speed to which we can synchronize with the flash, which is 250. There is a thing called high-speed sync. We're not gonna worry about that right now. Forget about it. Forget about it. We can't do it. No. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna... the, the what? <laughs> Never know what you're talking about. So, um, and the final factor in your exposure triangle, as I steal from Mark Wallace, although Gavin had the exposure diamond, which is pretty, but anyways, the final factor, final factor in your exposure triangle is your aperture. So how do we set our aperture? That's going to vary, right? Those other two things will always be the same. Whether you're here at Adorama shooting, I mean, I don't know how many of you guys shoot at Adorama, but if you are, if you're at your studio, if you're at your apartment, you're in the street, those other two things will be the same. 100 ISO, which is the lowest for this camera, 250 shutter, whatever those things are for your camera. There's that one guy that comes to every open shoot that can only go to 200 ISO. So for that guy, it's 200 ISO. For everybody else in the world, it's 100. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. This one guy can only go to, anyways. So for, if you're watching, you know you know I'm talking about you. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, anyways. You don't want to go below the base ISO. I don't want to get too much into this. I think you go into it in something that you did. You did actually, if you watch the video about filmmaking from last week, Dave talks about it. But it, it, it can add noise and stuff. So anyways, stay at the base ISO. <coughs> the final factor is your aperture. That gets determined by the space that you're in. And how can you figure it out? Part of it is going to be trial and error. You could use a light meter, which we have in the camera, right? The camera has a light meter in it. When you're looking into your camera in manual mode, you'll see there's a little plus minus thing and you can, if you change your aperture, you'll see it move back and forth. Move it to the minus until it goes as dark as it can go. Uh, usually the three, most cameras have three stops inside. And then take a shot and that should give you a completely black frame, right? It should give you a completely underexposed frame by three shot, three stops. Um, in this case, because we're here every week, I know that it's usually around F8, so that's probably where Dave is. Um, so he didn't have to do it that way. If you didn't want to use the meter on your camera for some reason, and you were just lazy, or I don't know, you just wanted to do it, you could just put your camera at F8. That's a good place to start because it's in the middle, right? And if you take a picture at F8 and you can see stuff, then you need to close down. If you don't see stuff, you could open up if you desire um, until you're at least a stop or so. I like to be around two stops underexposed. Um, and the way I know that is I'm gonna capture one again. I'm gonna grab my exposure slider here, and I'm gonna bring it over until I start to see her. Is like 2.22, so that's like we're about two stops underexposed, roughly, right? So that means that if in post, right, I decide I want to bring up my shadows or something, I have some room to move before any of the light in the space is going to, going to infiltrate my shot, right? If I was only, let's say, a stop underexposed, and then I wanted to bring my shadows up, I might start picking up weird color and stuff in my shadows because I'd be getting the ambient light. The ambient light in here, of course, is tungsten base. That's why the picture looked a little bit orangey if you saw it. Um, and then it wouldn't want that. Nobody wants that. So we're set up like that. Now we've got our flash. It's a Profoto B1, um, which is a battery powered flash. 
If you want to know how much it costs, there's a price right on it for some reason. <laughs> no. So that's good. I guess that's they added that little function there. Um, so it might be an old price. So yeah, I'll make you a deal. So yeah, uh, this is the flash. We're going to point the flash at our subject, maybe closer. Yeah. Right, and we're going to use TTL metering. So TTL metering is means through the lens. Actually, let me reset the camera because I did this last time. Uh, it means that uh, I was messing with it earlier. It means that the camera's meter is going to uh, determine the exposure. So, because people often say when I use a TTL, why don't you use a light meter, Daniel? Well, it is a light meter. It's the camera's light meter. Now, the fact that we're using a small light source because of things that are behind her, all the other factors in the world, it might not be a perfect exposure. Don't freak out if the TTL doesn't give you a perfect exposure the first time. You make your exposure, you can adjust from there. It's just a place, hey, it just gives you a place to just start. So we're going to use that to start. Hopefully it won't be like 85 stops overexposed. It probably will be, though, because we're live, and that's always weird. <coughs> Whenever you're live, nothing works. That's, that's the first rule of photography. Well, that's not terrible. OK, so we can see that we have an exposure. It's a little hot, but actually, it's still, yeah, it's still got detail in my whites. I'm not blown out anywhere. So technically, this is a decent exposure. Well done, TTL. So thanks for coming. Next week, we'll cover how to make the, no, so this is now a hard light, right? I, I could have guessed that it was going to be a hard light because, uh, because of the size of it, you know, relative to, to her head, right? We've got, you know, her head, right, the light. So it's going to be a hard light source. And we can see that our shadows are, our, our line here is very abrupt. Now, I should note that just because your shadows are very dark or not very dark doesn't make the light hard or soft. How dark they are is not re relevant. I mean, it will, it can affect it, obviously, but you can have dark shadows and soft light and filled up shadows and hard light. It's really this, this demarcation that makes the difference. Now, and you can see, this is, by the way, your favorite part, I'm sure. <laughs> if we blow it up really close here, we can see the same thing I was saying. All, I mean, she has beautiful skin. You have beautiful skin. Thanks. See? But even, even with beautiful skin, you see, you know, the texture, which you may or may not want in a shot. It really depends. Never blow a picture of me that, I, that much. I'm just going to say that right there. If you ever photograph me, I don't ever want that. Okay. Yeah, I know. Seth is going to get me. Uh, okay, so that's our hard light. Now, we can use this to effect, right? Hard light is not necessarily bad, right? We can use it to shape uh, and create contrast and stuff. Um, maybe we'll do like a... Maybe turn like a profile, so facing the, the back, yep. right? We could maybe use this to, again, like I was saying, we could shape her face. Like I could take this hard light, could point, it, point it right at her nose. Now, this does have a modeling light if we wanted to see. Sometimes when you're messing around, you can turn your, I'm going to blind you. Yep, she's okay with that. Okay, <laughs> so we can see, you know, where it is, and we can actually use it to shape the face a little bit. I don't know, something like that might be good. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Again, we're still in TTL. Now we're side lighting. We'll see what happens. Once you get a general uh, exposure that you like, what I recommend that you do, yeah, that one's a good, oh, not bad either. Wow, it's doing good. Um, it's a little hot. Yeah, it's definitely hot. There we're losing detail. So now we know we gotta dial it back. You can actually tell a TTL flash, hey man, that's a little much, turn it down a little bit, which is what you would do with most systems. And this you can switch to manual, which is what we generally do at this point. Uh, the Profoto locks in the numbers, and you can just go from there. It's probably a couple stops overexposed, so we're, we're at this point. You can also use, again, using Capture One, I can also pull it back until I see detail, which is about a stop and a half, Ooh, which is what Dave said, too. Go, Dave. So we drop down the power of the light by 1.5 <laughs> stops, roughly. And now we got the detail. Maybe even a little bit darker. Maybe, oh, maybe nice. Sorry. I forgot. Is it my bad? Ah, you forgot. Yeah, you don't do it from here. Oh, yeah. Oh, you were doing it in TTL. I thought you switched to manual. Yeah, no. If you are using TTL with the Profoto system, this is weird. Sorry, Profoto, but very important. If you're only using one flash, you must use the internal compensation on the camera, okay. not the remote. If you're using more than one flash, you use the remote. Why? Yeah, I would just go manual at this point. It resets. Yeah. 
it'll reset itself. So it's better just to go manual once you get close. Um, as an interesting note, because I get this question a lot, if you're using more than one, you can still use the internal uh, exposure compensation. It will just do it for all the flashes. So let's say you have everything just the way you like it, but you want to bring it down a little bit overall, you can do it in the camera and it'll bring all the flashes down equally. There we go. That's not bad. There we go. So now we've got, again, now we're kind of using this, uh, this uh, hard light to shape and show the, the kind of nice texture, n not just the texture of her skin, but also the shape of her cheekbone. She has like a really nice cheekbone here. You know, the hard light is, is echoing or showing that. We can actually uh, position it, you can say where you are. I can even move it back a little bit further to bring the shadows where I want them. Like that, maybe. I'm also going to raise uh, even more. I'm going to raise this a little bit, too. There we go. Yeah, so now we're going to play around with the shadow. That's the modeling light, by the way, which is, I guess, one advantage of using, like, a studio versus, let's say, a small flash. You do have the modeling light where you can aim it. Maybe look at the upper knuckle there. <coughs> David's pointing. Yep, pointing. There we go. Right, so now we're getting, again, we're using the shadow um, to create some drama, to focus the light where we want it to be, right? Which is easier to do with a small source. That's kind of your trade off, right? Sm lots of small sources, like lighting with that technique, can be really nice because you can light little areas the way you like it, but small lights are going to be hard, so you've got to keep that in mind. Um, so we can definitely use it. Now, the simplest way to uh, make your light softer is to make it bigger. So depending on your situation, if you had a relatively large light source that was far away, you could just move it closer. In this case, it's never going to be soft because of its size uh, relative to her head. So we can put something between our flash and our subject, which will then make the big. Take this silk. This is a silk from, from Matthews, the road rags silk. Um, artificial silk, I guess it is. Um, so when the light hits this, it's going. this is going to become our light source, right? And this is obviously bigger, right? We look at her head. It's bigger than her head. We're good. Now, yeah. It's also made out of diffusion material. And this is one of the things that's a little bit confusing. You don't make a light softer by diffusing it. Because you hear that a lot. People are like, if I diffuse my light, it will make it softer. This is not true. If I put my diffuser, if I just took a piece of diffusion and I just stuck it right here, the light would not get softer. It would just be more diffuse, which is a whole other class. So we're going to make it softer. So when it hits the diffusion material, it's going to get bigger. That's why it's getting softer, not because we're using diffusion per se. We could also bounce it, which would make it softer because it would be bigger in that sense too. Oh, I'm in the shot of them there. There we go. Now this is going to eat some light. Yeah, I raised it about a stop and a half. So, we'll so Dave raised the power. We'll see what happens. I'm right-handed, so I have to do a little. <laughs> and then that's in the shot, but I think it'll be okay. We'll leave it in for a second to see how that might. Okay, so uh, right, a little, uh, little hot. A little less than a stop and yeah. a half, so that's okay. Maybe. Adjust our exposure here. All air on the side of dark. There we go. All right, so now we've got uh, you know a softer light source, so we can see that the shadows, right, compared to our hard light, okay, you see the difference? Okay, good. I'm always nervous it's not going to work. All right, so there we go. So that's that's your basic, uh, your concept, right? So you're making the light softer. Now, there are other things we could do. Let's say that we would like it hard, but maybe it's just too dark in the shadows. I was mentioning before, you can brighten up your shadows and still be a hard light. Like, we like the hard light because we like the punchiness of it, but we, our shadow's too dark. We could also just use a reflector, right? Seth has these reflectors that he makes in Brooklyn. special sale. We can bounce the light back in, which will be tricky because the light's over there, but I'm going to try. Is that going to turn the modeling light on? I don't know. 
At the angle, it might be tricky to do. Yeah, probably have to turn it a little bit. Good. All right, so we'll do it before and after so we can see the difference. Yeah, all right. So this might seem really simple, but I'll say it anyways. If you're going to use a, ba uh, a bounce card, you have to make sure you actually bounce the light. Like just taking a reflector and putting it somewhere where there's no light hitting it is going to do nothing. I just I see people do that all the time. I'm like, what are you doing? But so that's why it has to be said. I'm sure none of you guys have ever done that, but nice. For no extra charge, they've got you a dark background as well. Okay, so now we definitely. So I'm going to bring the, the the card over here. This should theoretically bounce light in. This is a white card. We could also use silver, which we might want to use actually to bring some back. But we'll start here. So now we can see using the hard light, but with a reflector to fill in, right? We still have this this shape to the jawline. Right? You still see the shape, right? The light's the same, but now we can see into the shadow, right? So now we have some detail there. Make sense? And I don't know if we need silver or not. Let's try silver if we have one, which I think we do. And the only reason why I think silver might be nice is, nice is because it's going to possibly uh, kick a little bit more light. Our hair is uh, got some nice re reflectiveness to it. She uses uh, suave. Um, so, the specular light of the silver might help. This is a five-in-one reflector. It is an oval, apparently. Um, I don't know why it's an oval. I've never seen it before. No, oh, well, I'm using the oval. Okay. There's nothing wrong with an oval. These comes in many shapes and sizes. I'm assuming it's Flashpoint. Flashpoint is the uh, is the Adorama House brand, so that's usually the reflectors that are floating around here. So basically, um, I'm switching to the silver. The reason why I'm not going to use the gold is because I don't want to add any color to the shot. If you like the gold, let's say you're from Venezuela, you like the gold reflector, right, because it's sunny down there. That's right. In New York, we don't use gold reflectors because the light never looks like that. All right, so. <laughs> Next week, we'll be live in Venezuela. <laughs> okay. Now I've got silver. Huh, interesting. Didn't do much more. But. Eh. Yeah, I think it's the angle. Yeah, it's not bringing up the hair like I was hoping it would. So I'll just pretend like that didn't happen. Just rewind back. You didn't see. Hey, you know, not everything works. We could test it with the modeling. Yeah, we probably have to hit it with. Yeah, see, we try the modeling light. Just want to get more under a hair. Am I getting it there or no? It's uh, not really. Kind of, sort of, but not really. Like right. It become even more of a cheap angle. Oh, like that? No, no, no. Oh, like like, like that, flatter. You're back out more, yeah. Oh, like that. It's not doing it. Yeah, so sunlight, um, the sun, the light from the sun is, is hard, right? Because the sun is really tiny. Scientists, for some reason, say that the sun is large, but whenever I look at it, it's really small, right? But again, that comes down to distance. The sun is, in fact, well, we think. I don't know. It's a fact. I've never been out there, to be honest with you. The sun's very large, but because it's so far away, it is tiny, right? Tiny equals hard. So you can get beautiful light, uh, you know, with a hard light source, because of course the sun is like some of the best light you can get. Now, when it's cloudy, cloud is closer to us than the sun, right? Makes the light larger. So it's the same effect. It's the same thing. We're just doing it in here in a controlled uh, environment. Make sense? All right, good. We're cruising. We are cruising. Just because I said it, I'll do it. The other way to make your light softer is to bounce it. Bouncing the light will make it larger. So we can also, let's say you're, you're like, but Daniel, I don't have a Matthews road rag kit. Well, you know what? Oh, 
Although the Road Rags kit at $205 is still a better deal than the $450 reflector card from Seth. I've heard you can pick them up in other places, but they're never as nice as the ones he makes. Uh, so I can bounce the light, right? If I bounce the light off of this, the light becomes bigger. I could even, there's, there's a certain ratio of how far back I can put it, right? So if I put it too far back, it is getting further away, so it's getting, right? But I want to make sure the whole card gets filled with light. That's like the key. So I'll put it in as close as I can and still fill the whole card with light, which is somewhere around there. I'm going to guesstimate the... Uh... Why, not, why not guess? It's not like we're not live. Nobody's watching us. Nobody cares. Probably gonna be off. Uh, except for what it's gonna be. Oh. Angle's gonna be in the shot, but. Make sure you get my good side. Okay. There I am. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's actually nicer than the other thing. See, there you go. So, you can bounce the light, right? And remember that having the, the, the control. It's like avant garde. I can't deal with her anymore. Now, interestingly enough, while I am getting hit, this is actually, by the way, I did this on purpose to do the ultimate demonstration. I'm actually being hit by two lights. Forget about her. Let's look at me for a second. <laughs> the, a, the edge of the strobe is hitting me, creating this first shadow, right? Which is a relatively hard shadow. But some of the light from the bounce card is also hitting me, creating this shadow, which is a softer shadow. That was, good. that was pretty good, right? I did that on purpose. <laughs> Come on now. I got this whole thing planned out ahead of time. Sure. Weeks ahead I planned these things. Cool, that makes sense, right? But no, but you see how that works, right? So you can see the difference. What's that? Seth yeah, has an idea. You can also bounce off the ceiling. You could bounce off the ceiling, but I don't recommend doing that. In this space. Yeah. Uh, why don't I write? Well, let's just do it. I'm gonna have to go a little taller, I think. Uh, okay. Otherwise, this is a pretty wide spread. So if you're gonna do that, you gotta be a little careful so you don't get the edge of the light. Okay, so we have a very powerful light, right? So we can definitely bounce it off the ceiling. Um, we have found in the past with some speed lights to design enough oomph uh, to get a shot out of it. But with this, we should be plenty of light. Um, but one of the problems with this is that Sure, we're grading a gigantic light, but it is also an overhead light. So we may find ourselves with, with weird shadows in our eyes. We can look at the camera, I think, probably. Yeah. If we do end up having uh, too much shadow, we can always add our fill card. I'm going to, again, guesstimate the exposure. Now we get a little bounce going on. By the way, you may notice here that I've set up this large uh, octagon in the back. We're not even going to use it. It's just there for show, like literally. Oh, perfect. Done. There she is. OK, so what's the problem here? You love it. You think it's perfect. No, you don't. So yeah, the, the shadow is, is falling kind of in a bad area, right? Her eyes are basically dead. Now, so in order to make this work, who said Photoshop? No, okay, good. All right, good. All right, so uh, we can try to bounce a card in, maybe. By the way, you can use this both horizontally and vertically. We should make an infomercial for this. And that'll help, right? See that? So what have we learned so far today? Right. And now we got pretty, pretty, uh, pretty even. Yeah, we have enough power, right? Yeah, we can okay. pump up a little more. Yeah, you think it's too dark? Let's try again. We're a little bit. Let's add a little bit. Here we go. The cops are coming for you. There we go. Give her a little more light. Now she looks happy, right? And we could also, if I break these photo brigade uh, mugs, Robert will kill me. <laughs> By the way, if you don't know, for how usually Fridays? Yeah, usually Friday's Photo Brigade, uh, Robert. Uh, two tomorrow. Oh, wow. Two tomorrow. Yeah, Robert uh, Kaplan does uh, some great interviews. Uh, a lot of good photographers here. Uh, what? No, you just saw all that light come off of it. Yeah, it's not real, though. <laughs> it's fake light? 
Well, it's not the light that we're using. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, you can easily be tricked by a reflector. And then tune up a little bit. Yeah. A little less. We got the silver going just because it might be too much. Who knows? Yeah. Just a little more, a little, little, little brighter than I probably would go for. But you know, you can see you can bang that in there too. That cleans it up nicely. They're asking, what if you're only one person and no one's like holding reflectors and stuff for you? Okay, so people are asking online, what if you are by yourself? Like, what do you do? Could you hold this? Yeah, put it under her chin. <laughs> there you go. You're saying because he's random. <laughs> that is nice and glowy. There we go. Well done. All right. Good job. Okay, so what do you do if you're, if you're by yourself? You just ask somebody to hold the reflector. I mean... I have yet in my life to have somebody say no. Well, somebody says no once in a while, but eventually you find somebody to hold the reflector. Like, who doesn't want to hang out on a photo shoot? It's like the coolest thing in the world, right? Um, also, you could do this. Could you hold this? You're asking what material the bounce card is. Don't make a joke. I'm making a joke. <laughs> So Seth is telling me there's a question, but he says I can't make a joke. That is not fair. <laughs> okay, she's not quite as good at it as you were, but you know, she, she does a pretty good job. Uh, you can have people hold it themselves. I mean, you know, yeah, you, you can make it work. The thing is, is that you can also put it on a stand. If you're like in a studio by yourself, I would put it on a light stand or a chair or a table. I mean, there's lots of ways you can do it. If you're using the special uh, Seth reflector, these are Teflon coated. <laughs> now, was it made out of it? That was the question. It's just cardboard. It's foam core. You can get this at uh, hobby shops, yeah, Dwayne yeah. Reed, drug stores. Drug they say, do they say drug store anymore? That's so old fashioned. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you get that at the drug store. <laughs> at the pharmacy. Yeah, you can get, <laughs> yeah, you can get these. Uh, <laughs> actually, the apothecary is probably the one place they wouldn't have it. Because <laughs> that sounds fancy. Yeah, uh, you get them at like Staples or whatever. It's just a piece of foam core card. You can get ones that are metallic uh, and uh, in both gold and silver and matte and shiny from uh, Adorama. I forget who makes them now. Is it Matthews that makes them? Show card, they call them. But if you just want white ones, you can get them anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Show card. Yeah. You just look up show card. You'll find it online. It's, it, it's basically the same thing, but they're a little thinner and they're uh, silver and, and gold. Now, the advantage of using... Um, like a professional one, let's say, because people often, I get this question a lot, would be that it's going to be consistent. If you buy like the photo one for twice as much money, it's going to always be the same white. If that matters to you, then yeah, it matters. Otherwise, you could be like Seth and just buy this one. Oh, he's a pizza box. We have pizza box. He does have a pizza box. Let's do the pizza box. Oh, shit. Well, there's two kinds. There's two kinds. There's two kinds of pizzas? There's, all, there's the matte and then there's like a cold. Hold on, there's matte and shiny pizza? So this is like matte. This is, this is going to be matte finish. Okay. And then this is going to give you more of a kick, but it's a smaller source, so it's kind of like a trade-off. Oh, no, I like the matte finished. So, you go to lunch with your model. She has pizza, because models love pizza. You like pizza? Yes. There you go. <laughs> Do they have pizza box and boxes in Venezuela? Yes, of course. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm from Massachusetts, and we used to get pizza. It was like on this. It wasn't in a box like that. Now it is. They changed it, but it used to be like in like a plate. Does anybody else have that? No. Yeah, okay. It was like a plate and they put another one on top, right? In the paper bag. That's how they do it. This is going to be no bounce clock. It better do something. Oh, yeah, it worked, kind of. Not nearly as much, but it's there. It's not made for an indirect. It's more for an, a direct. Oh, 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 oh. It's, made, it's, made, it's made for a direct. You're use a pizza box. Oh. A pizza box oh. No, right. you said a pizza box could be used. Uh, you, said, you said a pizza box could be used. I said I got pizza box. <laughs> 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 So if you don't have a soft box, you can use a pizza box. That's, that's the thing. But anyways, the idea is that you're bouncing the light and making it, 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 it bigger. I'm just going to make her hold it. Yeah, it didn't quite fill enough. Um, but there you go, right? The idea is, is, is uh, hey, Ephraim. The idea is that you would, you could use, she has like a white uh, jacket. You could use just about anything. Light, you know, is going to bounce off the thing. And it's also going to be influenced color-wise by 
what you bounced off. So if you bounced off something that was, let's say had a blue tinge to it, it would add blue to your, your fill or to your shadows, which is kind of a cool effect too that you can play around with. So, so keep that, in, oh, Dave's got something. Dave has a plan. Right, the frontal oh yeah, frontal barns. That's what we do in speed light day. Oh, you guys are getting a speed light day bonus. No, no, no. You're doing it now. You already started. Guessing the power. Dave just guesses. That's what he does. Questions? Thoughts? You do need a family size pizza box. None of that personal pan pizza. Oh, that's cool. It's a little overexposed. But I do like the lens flare. You're full power now? Full power. Well, I wasn't. This is what it looks like after you put it through the Instagram filter. Yep. But that's before. That's a bit, a bit it's close. That's a cool flare. It's, it's very green. Yeah. That might not be. Uh, Two years ago when I got this lens, it had a hood, I swear. <laughs> and now? You, had, you went through two hoods, actually. Yes, I have no hoods anymore. They keep, uh, keep the screen. Yeah, there we go. Oh, so yeah, you can bounce it that way. So you get the idea. We're making soft light from a hard light, right? The flare is because this light, mm -hmm. what's really interesting about these pro photo lights, let me go into commercial mode. Uh, it has a huge, I think it's like 120 or 130 degree spread. So this actually has a, a massive spread. So it's not like a, a focused light. It's actually, it's very yeah. Okay. So it's, so yeah, it's got a really big spread. So you gotta be a little careful. Uh, a lot of that light is going directly into the lens. Yeah, so if I had a lens hood, it would take care of it. Okay, so let's use an actual large s source though, right? So let's say that we, generally like to use soft light when making portraits, right? That's a pretty, uh, that's a pretty okay statement, right? Most people are, want to be flattered, right? So they want to have the less detail in their skin. Um, and we could f flattered, not flatter. You make them flatter by using a, a longer lens. Okay. But we covered that in a different video. <laughs> you did that on Dave, actually. We did it on Dave, yes. So if you want to see Dave both flat and unflat, okay. Okay, this is a Profoto D2. I don't know if I said what the other one was, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Can't go back. This is a Profoto D2, which is the, the, the plug-in light. Um, it's 1,000 watt seconds, so it's a little bit more powerful, um, but it does work with the same air remote system. I'm turning it so that the, the, the heavy part is over the long leg, which is kind of good C-stand etiquette. I'm not saying anything in the model, I'm letting her, this is an intelligence test for models. When you start spitting the light around, you see if they can avoid it or not. If they just stand there and get hit by it. <laughs> it's like the box tail test. Yeah, exactly. Right. But then isn't it okay because a soft box. Right, but if you're gonna hit a model with anything, that's right. Well, Seth, I can't tell jokes anymore. I didn't see, no, I said about the friggin' phone call. Okay. <laughs> All right. He's ragging on me for telling jokes, I'm sorry. Are they jokes though? Are they really jokes? They're more like observation humor. <laughs> yes. Okay, so. <laughs> so, a couple things. Yes, the first. So the question is about flash duration. I'll, I'll kind of cover it. So, the the first light was 500 watt seconds. This one's a thousand, right? That gives you about one more stop of light. Okay, so we all get that part, right? But the real flash duration. So flash duration is the amount of time the flash is actually firing. So if people don't. Um, don't know this, like I covered in my basic flash thing, but if I, let me just cover it quickly so people don't know. Uh, essentially, when your flash is firing, it's only firing, even though I'm set at 250th of a second, because second, if I put it all the way down at the lowest power, it might be 20,000 or whatever it might be for this light. This is actually a tremendously fast light. That's why it becomes a little bit weird. Um, this one is designed to have super fast flash duration. So even though it's more powerful, it technically I think has a shorter flash duration than the other one. I don't know the exact numbers, but uh, I think in this case, but apples to apples, the more powerful, generally the slower the flash duration, which means that it's, you can't stop as quick of an action if, if people are wondering why. So let's say if she was jumping, you're a dancer, right? 
All right. We never. Yeah. You can jump though. You're a jumper. I guess. Can you do the dance called the jump? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. So, hello. Good. Um, let's say she's gonna jump. Do you want to jump? jump? Yeah, she's gonna jump. We've 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 went off course. So hold on. Oh, we might lose the stream. We might lose the stream, and if we do, what, are you going to bring it back? If we do, you'll bring it back. That doesn't affect you guys. Aren't you glad to be here? That's what I was saying about coming. Actually, I have to stop when the stream stops. I'm, I'm connected to it. You want to talk to, about this? Yeah, let's talk to this for a second. I got sidetracked by the jumping, because anybody who asks me to have the model jump, I have, you automatically get something. Um, now we got the soft light going, right? Whoa, there I am talking. So this is our big octagon, right? And we can see that two things here. Actually, this kind of goes relevant to the question you asked before we started. We can see that the edge here is, is soft, right? We can see it's, it starts to flare out. You can see here, technically, all of this side of her is in shadow. I know it doesn't sound seem that way, but that's actually all shadow, right? So if you look from the neutral, which is here, you go through the shadowed area into what is eventually the blacks down here. You do have this like secondary shadow because we've got her nose, which, I, which is another thing. You know, if you have a bunch of things, each thing throws their own shadow. Oh, that's the alarm that goes off when I have to go to bed. I hope it's not that late. Um, but we've got nice soft light. And this gives, there was a question earlier about shapes. If you're going to use one light source, sometimes a big octagon is nice because it tends to have a lot of reach, like a lot of wrap. So it kind of has like, this nice smooth wrap around, uh, which creates a nice soft light. So if what you're looking for, let's say in portraiture is a soft light, you know, this is a good place to start. You're basically there, right? And in this case, because the light's literally like kind of right next to her, I probably, instead of, you know, I want to make sure, again, about that bouncing the light back, I probably would put the, light, the reflector here if I want to add a little bit of fill on that side, if I desire that. And I do. And I can fill it right up, right? And we can notice if we get in close, look at how gentle it is on the skin. I'll go to the same areas where we were before. See how gentle that is when we were on her lip before? See, now you don't mind that I get that close, right? You see how gentle that is on the skin, not showing uh, the, the texture as much. Good, good thing you have good skin. I knew that, planned ahead. So, we've got that. That all makes sense, right? Let's just do a quick little jump thing, because I feel like it. Okay. I don't know why. We're just going to stop you. Can, you. can we go, are you No, you're 70, right? Uh, oh, 50 ish. Okay, you can go wide, all right, so she can jump. Oh, you want me to go wide? Yeah, so she'll jump because at every photo shoot, if a model volunteers to jump, you should do it. It's just a thing, right? Yeah, and then again, none of the light in the space affecting our shot, which means that it, she'll be frozen if she jumps. Uh, I'm sure. I don't know where we are power wise. We're probably kind of cranked up, but again, this flash has a very short flash duration. Um, I don't know uh, what it is exactly. At the setting, you can look it up. There's like a little chart when you buy the light. In that paperwork that I immediately threw away, there's a chart there. <laughs> yeah, if I, if I really care about stopping action, what I'll do is I'll, I'll always turn my lights down as low as possible, and I'll even use multiple lights if need be to get the same amount of light, yes? Do you mark the space when you're doing the shoot? Do I mark the space? Yeah, do you mark where she's going to be located with reference to the uh, modifier? No. Do I mark? The, I don't mark the space. Uh, not you mean for the for these or just in life? No, I'm saying like if you're doing it in the studio. Oh, okay. So do I mark where the model is going to stand in reference to the modifier so that what she always go back to the same spot? Is that why you're asking? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm going to uh, be shooting something where the model is going to be moving around, let's say jumping, um, or let's say I'm doing a fashion catalog where I'm going to have one lighting set up the whole day and they're going to keep leaving and coming back and leaving and coming back. Yeah, I'll put a mark on the floor so that the model will always stand back in the same spot. That way you don't have to keep adjusting and fidgeting with the light and stuff. Um, interestingly enough, it's very difficult for models to stay in one spot. So that's, that's actually a good question. Um, when I used to do a lot of catalog work, I would always hire the models that could stay in one spot. No matter what they, it didn't matter what you look like, if you could stay in one spot, boom. The worst thing is not a focus picture, right? For a catalog. Okay, do we jump? Okay. Oh, we haven't done it yet. I was waiting for the jump. I'm, yeah. like, I'm excited for it. I don't care. Are we back live again? We, we, we're fine. Just oh, we didn't go anywhere. Okay. No, we, we just slowed False down. alarm. We slowed down. There wasn't too many of the golf men. Oh. Right, so Sorry. I didn't know you were doing it. No, I was, I was, that was filler. 
Nice. That's kind of good. Yeah. You can't really tell she's jumping. You can't. That was kind of a fail. I mean, if, I, if you want, I can go wider. Well, well, or maybe, you, maybe instead of jumping, maybe you could do something dramatic with your hand. Go like. Okay. Can you do that? Yeah. That was a, okay. <laughs> you make it look so easy. When I did, it was like a whole difficult thing. <laughs> Here she's like the nesty plunge. Nesty plunge. Nobody. No. There we go. Yeah, so we got her. She's frozen. Yeah. She'll be. Fro she'll be fr She's terrified. Yeah, you can see her hand is frozen. You know, that's going to be her new Facebook profile shot. Perfect. Did you mention you're in Capture One? Oh, I am shooting into Capture One for those who want to know. That's why we can see the pictures right away. Um, this just using this kiss cable here, this orange cable from Tether Tools. It just allows me to see the shots right away. And by the way, I just got the right angle one. It's amazing. Like, and really, it, it's awesome. Like, I don't know why they weren't always right angle. Does anybody tether here? Yeah, it's like the one sticking out like this is a nightmare. Like, what's the point? Well, because there's proprietary clips for the cameras. Oh, proprietary clips. So they have to go out here like I used. I got you. Oh, right. I'm sorry. Okay. So, uh, no, okay, that makes sense. This one is so much better, though. Yeah, hard. No, I'm just messing with you. So, uh, Seth's saying because certain cameras have clips and stuff, so they need a straight one to come out of it, that makes sense. I don't care though, I don't have a clip, so I want, I like this one, so if you guys are getting a cable, I recommend. I get, I get three cents for every 1,000 sold, so it's good. Uh, no, but I just got the, it's amazing. Like I have the other one and it isn't, isn't even broken yet. I'm like, no, nah, I'm gonna use this one. So, that last shot was still at 300. Yeah, it's 250 of a second, we haven't changed anything, as far as I know. Yeah, we, no, oh, 200 of a second even. We're even going slower. Yeah, it's 200 of a second. Obviously, 200 of a second might seem fast, but it's not that fast. If somebody was going like this, it would certainly be blurred. Hmm? Go slower? Yeah. Nah. What? They're asking if you find Capture One faster to work with than Lego. So the question is, again, another not relevant to the thing question. You started it, by the way. You started it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so do I find Capture One faster than Lightroom? I do not ever shoot into Lightroom. So for me, it's faster because I don't use Lightroom. Um, I have Capture One. I've used it for years. It's super nice. If you don't own Capture One and you have Lightroom and you like it, then, you know, go for it. Um, yeah, if you're going to change, there is a 30-day free trial. There that used to be anyways. That's how, I, that's how, they, that's how they hooked me. Um, so certainly you could do that. Also, I think it's free for Sony people. So if you happen to be a Sony person, there's like a Sony version that's free. So good on you. Um, yeah, I find you can just do more. Um, more easily with Capture One. Personally, I found, but I've only like hooked up Lightroom to show people how it works. I've never actually done it. Um, like actually shot a whole job in it, so I can't say if it's faster or slower. I can't, sorry. Maybe I'll do a test, but probably not. I'm happy, I'm like that. Once I know something works, I just stick with it. That's like my philosophy. So Capture One I've been using since uh, 1927. <laughs> actually, the reason why I started on using Capture One is because I was using all medium format cameras and like they didn't work with, Lightroom has only been able to tether recently. So what are you doing? Are you recording on the camera and also on the hard drive and the... Uh, no, it doesn't, it doesn't record under the camera. It's just recording directly into the, into the computer. Is that how you shoot? How you do it? Yeah, that's how we do it. So basically the question is, is how, how is it recording? It's the camera? It's not? Nope, it just records directly into the computer. And then to the hard drive? Yep. You had a hard drive also. Well, I do have a hard drive, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I tend to shoot oh, when I, whenever I set up my Capture One. This is going real off course, but that's okay. Uh, when I set up Capture One to Tether, I generally shoot onto the desktop because I find it's faster. And then I copy it to hard drives in between breaks. That's how I do it. I usually don't shoot to a hard drive because I feel like that just adds too many things going on. So that's just how I do it, especially with my newer computer because it's an SSD, so it's like shooting super fast. Makes sense. Yeah, can you tell us to record to both places? Can you? I do not know. Can you accept? I don't think you, I think it used to record. The question is, can you record to both things? I'm not sure. Maybe you can set up a back, like a backup I think, folder. Yeah, possibly. It, it can only go to one source directly at a time. You can shoot directly to this hard drive. But you can't no, 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 he's talking about the card. Right, yeah. No, there is, no, there are other softwares oh, that do that, but you do slow down your, your shooting time. Yeah. It's, it's What's interesting is when you shoot medium format, like into a phase one back, it does record to both places at once. I don't know why. Um, but on the DSLRs, I found that just writes to the computer. I always leave a card in anyways, though, because if your computer crashes or something when you're working, you won't lose those shots. So I would recommend leaving a card in um, when you're tethered, even if you're not going to use it. Um, or spontaneously, you want to, like, I don't know, 
you see cool light somewhere and you don't have time to move the whole set, you can just unplug and run over and shoot. Yeah. Cool. That went to a capture one session. We actually, if there's interest in this, maybe people can say online if there is, uh, there's been talk of me doing like a whole capture one session with tethering. So if you guys are interested, let us know and I will do that. Um, but we won't, uh, we'll move away from that for right now, though. We're back to where we work. Yeah, let's do some fun stuff. Well, actually, before we do that, let's just do a hard soft with uh, this is our key and then maybe using like a kicker or something. So oftentimes you mix your lights, right? You might not, you, you might not go all uh, hard or all soft. Oh. Someone just listed all the flash durations for every setting on this light. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Thank you for the flash duration list. I will say certain brands, uh, burn color, uh, it, it actually tells you the flash duration on the light, which is pretty sweet, actually. Oh, and actually, the new Ellen Chrome does that, too. Yeah, that's what I said. I whispered it. So certain, certain flashes do, so if that's important to you, then you may want to look into that, or do you just have the list? Because we use that, what was that, the Ellen Chrome ELB1200, I hope I'm saying it right, that has the thing, which was kind of neat actually, because it's not always, in that light, it's weird, it's not always the lowest setting or the highest setting that's the worst or best, like it's, sometimes it's somewhere in the middle, you get, there's like a sweet spot, and I know in that light there was, it was like set around like, 30, 75% up or something was it the, the shortest flash duration for whatever reason, it was weird. But hey, you know. Okay, so now we're gonna do like a combo. We're gonna do our big soft light uh, as our key, which is really probably the most common way to use on, and then we're gonna use a hard light as our separation or hair light, right? Because we kind of want like that contrast there. Right? You could use a soft light as a hair light as well, but like if you didn't want, like her hair is shiny, we were talking about before, you want that shine. If you didn't want shine on your head, like me, right, then you would do a softer light. But we're not shooting me right now, are we? Yeah, that'll be my problem when Seth is, is going to do my portrait. He keeps promising. We're trading portraits. That's right. We're going to trade portraits. It'll be really exciting. We'll stay, stay tuned for that. I did just get my new portrait done. If you guys saw the video with Gavin Hoey, if you haven't watched that, it was really good. He shot a picture of me. It should be on YouTube still. Yep. Yeah, it was a YouTube Live. Oh, that's really nice, actually. That's your new passport photo. Okay, so now we've got this hard light here. Again, it's creating like this sudden drop to shadow, but because it immediately goes into the soft light, it just gives basically a shape, right? It's giving us that three-dimensionality, right? Three-dimensionality is, I think, something that people lack when they first start lighting stuff. Like, everybody gets a gigantic softbox and puts it up front, and it looks really pretty on the person's face, so they just move on. Having, like, this little bit of extra, adds that, that, uh, that next level to your work. So it's good to, uh, to play around with that. And you'll, it only costs an additional uh, $1,949. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah, some, some companies do that. Uh, add the flash duration. So again, if it's important. Also, we should probably do something on flash duration because I just want to mention um, Mostly because there's a conversation where they're mentioning some of the less expensive brands, and I don't know this about this brand, so I won't say it's true. There are less expensive brands that list really short flash durations, but flash there's two parts to your flash duration. There's like the initial part, and then there's like the, the drop-off. There's like T1 or T9. Ron Color goes into this. If you look on their website, they're, they're obsessed with it. A lot of cheap flashes sh list really short flash durations, but in fact, that's just the initial part, and then they have a drag after the fact, so you actually can still get blur, even though technically the flash is fast yeah it's like a tail so you got to be wary of that a lot of times advertising I know that I saw a certain company that has multiple colored mono lights you may know who I'm talking about uh, did a test against some brown color stuff once where they tried to repeat it and they, they totally didn't like they come they they BS the test to, to make it work yeah the tube is still burning exactly it doesn't kill itself fast enough so basically what ends up happening is you have this pop and then the long tail and that tail can still show blur so it's a little more complicated. Five eighty, Canon five eighty. Yeah, a lot of speed lights. A lot of speed lights have super short flash durations. So if you are looking to do like stop action stuff, speed lights are a great way to go. They just don't have a lot of power, so you, you know that's a trade off. Um, but sure, yeah, speed lights generally have a really short flash duration. Yeah, that's kind of nice, and we can see hard light here, lots and lots of texture, soft light here. Right, we see the soft, see the difference here? Hard, soft. 
Your makeup has a lot of like sparklies in it. Well, maybe you just have natural sparkle in your skin. Like fairy dust. Right, so we can see now uh, the, how the lights together form to create a, uh, a finished photo. That's not bad. What was the other thing we're supposed to be doing? Oh, you want to put behind her. We can do that. We have time, right? We have time? Yeah. We'll do one more thing. Question? You're just fixing your hair. I do that all the time. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's put this behind her. We can put the off light behind uh, the model to make a background out of it. Because why not? Okay. Isn't that what you meant? Oh, you meant as a hair light. No, like uh, the original, the other photos from earlier, earlier in the session. Oh, oh, to the side? Like at the oh, yeah, we could do that. Okay, yeah, sure, let's oh, do that. We're not going to do what I just said. Oh, I thought you were going to do behind and bouncing. No, me too. Okay, yes. Somebody you said the, the off dark wraps around, light does not bend, light just goes straight line. Oh, wow, look at you. <laughs> Listen, you come all the way from Venezuela, you're going to give me a hard time. Okay, so that is true. Uh, I use the term when I say wrap around. Uh, it's yeah. Sometimes we speak artistically when we're talking about lighting. Yeah, light goes in a straight line, which is actually a good thing to know. Um, when I say wrap around, I mean that the actual box itself is larger, so like usually has a, is more rounded on the edge. So instead of being a cut off edge, it's like extra, right? Which wraps around the subject, meaning the light goes past. Does that make sense? No, it's just the, the it just has, it has more spread basically. Like, like, look, if you were to, let's say that she was facing me, face me for a second, and I light her like this, this light is wrapping around. It's not really, right, but it's coming around. So that's what we call wrap around. Because you've got, yeah. No, light, there is light. a way to rub it inside. Because you've got so light. So the light gets there and then goes straight like everywhere. It always goes straight. And then that's why it wraps, it looks like it wraps. Forward. That's right. Yeah. Yes, you are correct. You're a scientist, right? Oh. These scientists come here and give me a hard time. Engineering. Is good. True, though, the light goes in a straight line, and that is actually something that is really important to know because it helps a lot, especially when I see people, again, with reflectors outside trying to bounce light, and I'm like, what are you doing? Like, this, how are you going to do that? Uh, the light? But yes, wraparound is more like an artistic uh, phrase. Listen, I, I blame my photo teachers. That they said they said it to me. It's I'm just passing slang. it on. It's actually like a photo yeah. slang. It's yeah, it's a photo slang. Yeah, it's like go on Urban Dictionary. <laughs> actually, don't. Do not look up wrap around on Urban Dictionary. God only oh, knows. Yeah, that's gonna be. <laughs> I, I don't even. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, get myself in trouble. Well, that's it. That's English. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're gonna now do like we did earlier, but with the soft light as Dave mentioned, because we have to go full circle. It's a circle of life. Dave just saw The Lion King, and it was good. So if you guys want to see The Lion King, Dave recommends it. Oh. The play. The play, yes, not the movie. I mean, the movie is probably also good. Look at that wraparound. Wow, look at your eyeball. <laughs> that is freaky. Okay, now that's more than 100%. Actually, my first digital camera, that's what it looked like when you blew it up. No, but that's what it used to look like. Digital cameras are so terrible. They're so good. Um, okay, yeah, so this is nice, creamy, creamy uh, light. Oh, I hear myself again. Should we just add a reflector to finish it because we like it? Yep. I'm like uh, that's from a Gavin Hoey. Uh, oh, this is a Gavin Hoey thing. Yeah, he left it from the, the live stream. Do you want to go to white with it? Do I have enough? Am I going to be able to do that? Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. I don't know if I can do this or not. I might need an engineer. <laughs> this wave doesn't work, I can blame him. Okay, let's see what he's learned. Sure. You could, uh, that's a good question, Seth, from the audience. Could you use the road rags to bounce? Sure, I mean, that's a white silk, so you certainly could bounce off that white. They also make reflective fabrics. Yes, so you can get uh, silver or gold. Yeah, I think you need to do a white bounce on that too. Yeah, it's probably coming even closer, right? Do a white bounce. It's doing something. Not much. It's very moody. Mm-hmm. All right. 
You went back that quickly? Yeah. You consider that a finished shot? Yeah. Wow. Dave's got it now. He's got it now. That's also what you do when you're by yourself. Dave, one hand, Bruce got Yep. Nice. That is very nice, actually. All right, good. So we've got. Do that with the hairline. You want to use the hairline now? Oh. Use the hairline. Oh, and with the hair light? Oh, wow. Okay. All right. All right. We're going, we're going over the top here. All right. Your Tinder is going to blow up. Cool. A little added hair light there. You can still set the hair light up and then just charge for it, but uh, don't use it. Here we go. Oh, all right, all right good. Dave's doing math. Questions before we, uh, yes. Okay, so why is the model at the edge of the softbox? So it doesn't wrap around. If we put her further back, the light would come more to the front, and then it would fill that, that shadow, which is actually what we're doing with the reflector, which is kind of funny. But we're doing create this edge light here that creates the cool cheekbone. Right? If we move the light more forward, it would flatten out on her. Oh. That is kind of nice, actually. Yes. <laughs> we'll fix the eyes in Photoshop. It'll be good. Your wrap is also lighting the backdrop, too. Yeah, and it's lighting, it's lighting the backdrop as well. But the reason why is we, we can just quickly do that. Go ahead and step into the center, and you'll just see the more light will get around the front of her. Thus, wrapping. I'm going to make you start saying this. How would you say that in Spanish? You speak Spanish in Venezuela? Uh, en Porbet. En Porbet? En Porbet? That's probably not even, I'm probably saying all kinds of crazy stuff. All right, now we can see that the light is more on that side of her face, right, without having to use a fill or whatever. So if you were um, just trying to get her whole face lit, that looks nice. you know, that's the difference. But that's why, that's why we were doing it like that. Good, okay, so that's why, that's why, if you were curious. And actually, this is one of the reasons why I like using a big box, because you can get a lot of different looks. We can move her at various places in the box, and it will affect the, the shadow that comes around the front of her face. Right? And because of the position of it, it's light in the background, like Seth said. Okay, other questions before we break. Did you have a question? All right, question? Some, some other scientific question? Yes. How do you feel about the, the deflectors inside the, inside the like, deflectors? You know, like oh, like Ellen Chrome has. Sure, okay, so the question is about the, uh, mostly Ellen Chrome, but I suppose you could probably stick it in any light. Um, they make a little, kind of like what's in that a beauty dish, uh, called a deflector that goes in front of the light, um, so that the light hits it and bounces around inside the softbox. And there's no hotspot. Yeah, it's supposed to not create a hotspot. Well, it, if you're not, I think the point of that is to use when you don't use your diffusers to create more of a beauty dish type uh, feel, um, so you don't get a hotspot, which is basically the point of it. Um, I think if you're using it when you have two layers of diffusion in it, you're probably not going to have much of a difference. You're probably just wasting light at that point. Um, but it's a cool thing to have. I mean, it, it adds that extra uh, kind of versatility to your box because you can have the deflector uh, in there and then no diffusion, or you can do diffusion. Spread bigger. Spread more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you take a light, like if I took this light, you know, even with, well, this is a pretty wide spread, but even with the spread, if I put it into a big soft box, it's not necessarily going to reach all the edges, right? So the deflector allows it to, to, to bounce and then bounce back. That's all that does. It's a useful tool, especially for their lights. It's made for it. But, of course, you need to have a head that can take the umbrella into the center. Otherwise, you can't do it because it doesn't work. Other questions? No? Okay, cool. All right, good. So uh, what do we get coming up? I have to do my, my, my announcements. 28th is a critique. So after Thanksgiving, yeah, I'll be fat. Seth is doing something on Monday at 6. Creative exposures. Creative exposures. That'll be fun. Uh, you going to use speed lights? Maybe. I'm 
He might use a speed lights. I know people guys like speed lights. Using speed lights. He's using speed lights. So uh, yeah, come to that. Oh, and the next, okay, so next week is? Not next week, I think it's next month. Is next week Thanksgiving? Yes, or the week after that. Yes, so I, don't, I won't be here on Thursday. So enjoy if you guys celebrate, and if you don't celebrate, don't enjoy, I guess. But anyways, uh, the week after that, we'll be coming back with uh, single light portraits. And I'm actually going to use a brand new light. I'm going to use, what's it called, the Honey Badger. Mm -hmm. Are you using that? Yeah, Peter dropped off the Honey Badger, which is a new light from Interfit. It's a kind of a, a less expensive light, and it's yellow. And I mean, it's yellow. Come on, man. So we're going to try it. So we're going to do single light portraits December with that. 7th is open shoot. But December 7th is the open shoot. So if you guys have not been to that, uh, and if you're not in New York now, you can plan a trip around it. You come in, we set up some lights, we have some models. You guys can shoot. It's kind of fun. It'll be the last one of the year. And uh, again, every Thursday we stream. So if you're in Venezuela, you can watch that way. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for coming. We'll see you. Oh, 3 o'clock, we'll be on Facebook. <laughs> I always forget that one. On Adorama's Facebook. It's already over. Was the logo come up? Boom, there it is. All right, bye guys.